Can tretinoin grow your hair? I'm a board certified dermatologist and in today's video, we're gonna find out. Many of you follow me over on TikTok and I have been getting tagged in a lot of posts from different creators who claim that using tretinoin helped them grow their hair. You know, over on TikTok, there are a ton of sensational claims that are made every single day just to hype up that algorithm and keep people scrolling and engaged. You have to take everything you see over there with a grain of salt. Is there any truth to using tretinoin to help your hair growth? Tretinoin applied to the skin can lead to a variety of helpful changes to various skin structures and skin function. It helps with skin cell differentiation and division, helping to normalize things so that the skin is smoothed out and healthy and radiant. Topical tretinoin also can help with improving the healthy growth of new blood vessels, bring in nutrients to nourish different skin structures. Tretinoin is probably more attractive to many of you as a, an ingredient that can help not only inhibit the destruction of collagen in the deeper layers of the skin, but also stimulate cells to make new healthy collagen. Probably one of the things that piques people's interest the most is the fact that it can help improve the signs of skin aging and it can help by boosting collagen production to smooth out fine lines and wrinkles, which is something people are always seeking from skincare products. It has a long standing track record in dermatology. We've been using it for over 50 years to treat not only acne, but many other skin conditions. Speaking of all of the benefits of tretinoin, improving collagen production, helping with cell differentiation and division, improving blood vessel formation, bringing in nutrients, growth factors, all of those things actually, as it turns out, end up being really important for healthy hair growth. So is it possible that something we use on our skin could be used to our scalp to improve hair growth? This is not an unreasonable question to entertain. Hair loss is very distressing to go through. It affects both men and women. The most common type of hair loss to impact both men and women is something known as androgenetic alopecia or pattern hair loss. In this type of hair loss, the growing phase of the hair cycle is shortened and the diameter of the hair follicle gets smaller. And with time, the hair starts to miniaturize, turn into a baby hair, you get thinning and baldness. Now I have a lot of videos on this channel about treatments for androgenetic alopecia. And for the most part, these treatments to some degree are going to focus on, at their root, improving the health of the hair follicle to get that hair growth phase back in action. And the good news about androgenetic alopecia is you can actually get regrowth with a variety of different treatments. What about topical tretinoin? Is that something that has even been explored? Before we get into that, you have to understand a little bit about how exactly it is that topical tretinoin leads to all of these magnificent positive effects in the skin. It does this by getting into your skin cells and binding to something floating around in the skin cells called cytosolic retinoic acid binding protein. This protein is essential for the beneficial effects of retinoic acid because it takes it from with, just within the cell to a specific location in the cell, the nucleus, and that, folks, is where the action is at. Turns out the hair follicle has a lot of this critical protein, cytosolic retinoic acid binding protein. Well, dang. If the hair follicle has the protein, could it be possible that tretinoin could work at the level of the hair follicle? Research looking at tretinoin for hair growth doesn't just start with TikTok, ladies and gentlemen. It actually goes back to a land far, far away known as the 80s. And it doesn't start with humans, but rather gerbils. A gerbil model actually showed that when you applied 0.025% tretinoin to gerbils who had areas where they could not grow hair, when you applied 0.025% tretinoin, they got growth of their fur back. Yay! Um, able to rescue their fur growth defect with applying tretinoin to their skin. 
Wow. And the researchers showed that they got an increase in the length of the growing phase, which if you remember, androgenetic alopecia has a shortened growing phase. So that small animal model really further provided a line of inquiry for using tretinoin for androgenetic alopecia. But as a reminder, you are not a gerbil. And I have to say this loud and clear because on social media, there is a tendency to overstate findings done in small animal models in order to, well, let's be honest, sell you stuff, uh, make it seem as though it's applicable to humans. Preclinical studies don't always translate to the reality for humans. A hair follicle in a gerbil is gonna be much different than that of a human. We do actually have some evidence from human studies, mostly back in the 80s, that yeah, applying tretinoin to the scalp might actually be something that we need to look into further for androgenetic alopecia. Back in 1986, there was a study that looked at 56 patients with androgenetic alopecia. And after one year, topical tretinoin was shown to stimulate hair growth in 58% of users. However, when a combination of tretinoin plus 0.5% minoxidil was used, 66% of users saw regrowth. Now, minoxidil is the active ingredient in Rogaine, and it is used at much higher percentages to treat androgenetic alopecia. They're using a really, really, really low percentage strength in this old school study, but interestingly, when they combined it with tretinoin, they got actually good results. When they just used the very, very low percentage of minoxidil, they didn't get any regrowth as a side note. Now, I have a lot of videos on minoxidil, but let's just focus in on this group that just used tretinoin and got results. I need to point out that this is not a huge study. It's pretty small. You hear 58% of people who used just tretinoin got regrowth, that might excite you until maybe you find out that 58% of 12 people is not a lot of people. Two out of the 12 people getting just tretinoin got a good response in hair regrowth, whereas five out of the 12 people on tretinoin got a moderate hair regrowth response, and five out of the 12 got no response. 36 patients got a combination of tretinoin and that 0.5% minoxidil, which as a reminder is much lower than what we typically use to treat androgenetic alopecia. Of those, uh, so they, they, the combination group was 36 people. 16 of the 36 had a good hair regrowth response with the combination of tretinoin plus minoxidil. Eight out of the 36 had a moderate hair regrowth response with the combination. And 12 out of the 36 had no regrowth with this combination. So there are a few things to unpack here. First of all, looks like tretinoin alone may help with hair regrowth. In the absence of minoxidil, people did in fact get good hair regrowth. Now, of those who did, I think probably one of the most notable responses is in this one woman who um, she got the tret she she just got tretinoin alone again. But prior to that, she had had an extensive history of androgenetic alopecia dating back to her 20s. She was 43. She'd had pattern hair loss since her 20s. Very stubborn, not getting results with anything. She tried and boom, she's on topical tretinoin and she got a, what they report as a 1,100% increase in hair growth. I've said this before though, nothing in the skin happens overnight and nothing with hair growth happens overnight. She started getting results though after about 18 months of using topical tretinoin. But some of the other people who responded to tretinoin alone in this study, they saw results as early as six months. One man, for example, saw prominent regrowth at six months. Interestingly, another guy in this study who responded to tretinoin alone, he had previously had several hair transplants uh, and with the hair transplants, transplants, he got no growth from the transplant. However, when he started using tretinoin, all of a sudden the transplant took off, started growing to a point where he finally, for the first time, actually needed to cut his hair. I mean, that is pretty notable in and of itself. The other thing we have learned from this study is that it looks as though using the standard of care topical treatment minoxidil in combination with tretinoin, those two together seem to exhibit synergy. And that there's something about tretinoin that for some people makes minoxidil work better. And there are a few reasons why this might be. First of all, we know that tretinoin can help improve penetration of things. It does this by smoothing out the top layer of the skin. However, that doesn't explain things in total because really where you want minoxidil to work is in the hair follicle, down in the dermis. And we also know that tretinoin 
increases dermal thickness, right? That's, that's, that's an attractive thing. That's why it smooths out wrinkles and fine lines. So as it's increasing dermal thickness, logic would follow it probably make it a little bit harder for things to get down into the follicle. Well, another group later on in life in the 2000s uh, actually did some more research on the combination of tretinoin with minoxidil. You see, minoxidil uh, applied to the scalp, it can help for sure with hair regrowth. Minoxidil is thought to work by improving uh, the delivery of growth factors and by improving the uh, differentiation, the proliferation of those follicle cells. But it doesn't work for everyone. And part of the reason why it doesn't work for everyone, in order for minoxidil to work in the hair follicle, it has to be converted to minoxidil sulfate via an enzyme in the hair follicle known as a sulfotransferase. But it's not clear if everybody's sulfotransferase activity in their hair follicles is as rip-roaring. And for this reason, it may explain why some people just don't respond particularly well to topical minoxidil. Well, guess what? This group showed that uh, topical tretinoin could improve sulfotransferase expression. So there are a few reasons that might be explaining the synergy that we see it, when using tretinoin plus minoxidil in people who have androgenetic alopecia. But trust me, more research is needed to fill in the blanks regarding the role of tretinoin for hair loss and for hair regrowth. Now, everything I've told you in this video, aside from the gerbil studies, in terms of the research that we have, has been done looking at a specific type of hair loss, androgenetic alopecia. Hair loss is a very complicated subject. There are so many different types of hair loss out there. You really have to remember that there are a lot of different types of hair loss that will spontaneously resolve with no treatment. Many types of hair shedding in particular are related to things that resolve and then the hair shedding slowly over the following months to years can resolve on its own. Just because somebody got results using tretinoin, there may be actually some truth to that, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get results. The type of hair loss that you have may be totally different, may be totally unrelated, or you, know, you may be better served with other treatments. The second thing you have to bear in mind is that there are so many types of hair loss out there and many of them will spontaneously resolve on their own. So when someone's claiming that a product, ingredient, lifestyle change help to regrow their hair, you have to ask yourself, what was the hair loss type that they had? Did they have a type of hair loss that eventually resolves on its own? And this cream, serum, pill, lotion, potion is merely guilty by association. Now, some of you at this point, you probably are thinking, well, if tretinoin has the possibility to grow hair, why is it that there aren't a ton of people out there with a bunch of facial hair from using retinoids, right? Many people are using tretinoin either for acne or for fine lines, wrinkles, or for something off label, some other indication. Why is it that we're just not all walking around with full beards and mustaches? That's a great point. And it suggests that the full story regarding retinoids and hair growth is not there. That being said, there are some reports of people getting hair growth on their face from topical tretinoin. One of note was in a male who had been using tretinoin in the beard area for his acne. And previously had a very patchy beard. And then with using tretinoin and improvement of his acne, he suddenly had nice beard regrowth. He was happy with that, right? That, that was a good thing for him. Now, whether or not the tretinoin did that or whether or not the tretinoin controlled the acne, which previously was so inflammatory, it was encroaching on healthy hair growth, that we don't know. There have been reports of people developing uh, a type of hair growth known as lanugo, basically fine downy hairs with certain oral retinoids that you take by mouth, but not so much with topical retinoids. It's not something that we routinely see, people developing you know, a ton of hair growth with using 
tretinoin. What are the downsides of just trying to use your topical retinoid on your scalp for hair regrowth? You know, it's funny, about a year ago or so, I, got, I was getting a lot of questions in the opposite direction. People asking me, can retinoids applied to the skin cause hair loss? And I addressed that in, in a video, which I'll link down below. But one of the things that can happen with a topical retinoid is that a lot of people develop a lot of irritation with it. That irritation can lead to scalp itch, redness, peeling, flaking. In theory, I suppose the irritation can get so brisk that it contribute to, contributes to maybe temporary hair breakage. I would say the greatest risk as it stands now with using topical tretinoin to the scalp is an irritant contact dermatitis. Similar to what many of you who have used tretinoin maybe have experienced on your face, you could likewise experience that on the scalp. For some people, they experience that to a greater degree in comparison to others. It's too irritating, it's uncomfortable. Now, as you'll recall from my videos on minoxidil, the topical used to treat androgenetic alopecia, a side effect of that topical treatment is dryness and irritation. So you can imagine that if you start using tretinoin along with that in an effort to enhance the penetration of it or perhaps to enhance sulfur transferase activity, whichever it is that explains the synergy, you have to be aware of the fact that you may get a lot more irritation with the combination. All right, you guys, so that's the story with tretinoin for hair growth. More research is needed. You know, what's the best percentage? What's the best frequency? And how long do you need to use it to maintain the hair growth? And uh, what types of hair loss are best suited for topical tretinoin? Lots of unanswered questions. So while there's probably some truth to the observations that people on TikTok have made with regards to using their tretinoin on their scalp and getting hair growth, I would caution trying to repeat anything that you see anyone ever do on TikTok. This is no exception. Uh, the main risk with using tretinoin to your scalp, of course, is going to be an irritant contact dermatitis. <laughs> But remember, hair loss is a really, really big category of different types of diseases in dermatology. So if you are experiencing hair loss, hair thinning, hair shedding, definitely see your healthcare provider, possibly be referred to a board certified dermatologist for further evaluation. There is a whole medical workup that goes on behind the scenes for determining what type of hair loss you have. So it's not as simple as copying what one person did for their hair loss. You could have something totally different. So I hope this video was helpful. On the end slate, I'm gonna link up that video all about retinol and hair loss. So watch that one next so you get a more well-rounded view of things. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.